Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. All right, guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. Austin Linney here. I got a special friend of mine, Tim Worlow. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing awesome, Austin. How are you? Doing great. So Tim is a real estate agent, a, a broker. He's an investor in the San Antonio area. Uh, we got in contact uh, from a mutual friend. He said, you got to meet this guy. Uh, so we had coffee one morning, and it was what you say, uh, bromance ensued right away. <laughs> Uh, we, we had the same kind of views on life. We, we've, we've had a similar path. Uh, we just, we just click on a lot of things. So what you're going to hear from him today is a, is a lot of great stuff about, uh, mindset, you know, real estate investing and just all kinds of stuff on how to grow a team, all those kind of things. So Tim, why don't you kind of start us, uh, with your journey and, and we'll get rolling. Awesome, dude. Yeah, I'll tell you first where I'm at right now. So, um, I am with, uh, Keller Williams Real Realty. And I am a team leader of two other buyers agents and we have an assistant full time. Um, I've been in real estate for six years. Um, really got a very interesting start, kind of stumbled into real estate accidentally. Um, so from there, I'll go back. It was, um, I have a degree in psychology and biology actually. And that's where I got my start. Thought I was gonna be like a counselor of some kind. Um, or then I started wanting to be a neurobiologist, but the whole, uh, lab setting wasn't right for me. I was missing that connection with people. And I realized that pretty quickly as well. The bench wasn't for me. So I got into sales pretty quick with, uh, Medtronic. So I was in like a science sales area and fell in love with that side of it. So I started really liking customer service business, you know, got involved in like a corporate world and, um, but it wasn't really enough because for me, I was doing a lot of work for other people, helping grow up a, a huge corporation that, um, you know, I was just a tiny cog in the wheel. And so it didn't feel like everything I was doing was really benefiting me. Um, moved on to another company where I became a sales trainer. Um, and that was like a more technical sci science field diagnostics moved up in management pretty quickly. By the time I was about 25, I was like a global product manager in a diabetes division. And that's when my friend came to me and he was like, hey, I'm starting a real estate brokerage. And I was like, oh, okay. Don't know what that is, but you know, that's cool. And he get, he's like, yeah, I'm just starting it up. And if you want to get your license, I'll pay for you to go to the classes. So I started taking the real estate courses. Um, which were super boring and like I wasn't very interested in any of any of that. Um, but what I was interested in was the prospect of like having a side hustle. I was young, I had free time and I was like, oh man, maybe this will help me um, make a little extra cheddar on the side. I could buy a motorcycle or I could you know, go, go somewhere if I want to. Um, what really changed was actually the first sale. As, as soon as I got my license, Somebody called me, um, somebody, a family friend, and they were like, we're looking to buy a house. Can you help us out? And so while I had a full-time job um, in the corporate world, I was like closing a deal. I think I was in Las Vegas at a conference and I was negotiating this deal for these people. And it was like a pretty tough negotiation. We were going back and forth. And I remember when she, she finally said, yep, they'll, they'll do it. They'll sign it. Got the contract done from like halfway across the country. And I was like, holy crap, that was that was pretty cool. Made, you know, made in one transaction what I would usually make in about a month working in a corporate field. And I was like, holy crap, this is huge. Like if I could do this once a month, I'd be fine. What if I could do this multiple times a month? So started really hustling, working weekends, working nights, like building up the business on the side. And right as I was about to, to leave that, um, to go start my own thing, um, I got, I got let go from the company. Our company downsized 80 employees from the marketing. The marketing department got cut down to like 20 people. And I was like, holy crap, my wife was eight months pregnant. Um, 
I was not ready to start a company. I was, I was like on the fence about it because I had that safety net. And um, I was panicking, honestly. Like we were a month away from having a baby and I was like, oh, my mind was blown. So went, work, went to work the same day, the same day that I got let go, went into the office, the real estate office and started making phone calls. Um, so let me ask you a question because I want to make sure we get the most value for the team. You know, I have in the past, something bad has happened. Um, you know, why didn't you, like you went to work that day. Why didn't you wallow? You know, why didn't you play the victim? Like, how did this happen to me? You know, why did you really, like, I know you had a baby coming, so maybe that was the driving force, but you know, some people would have, you know, cried and woes me and stuff like that. You know what? I think, I think what it was actually was that I knew inside of me that working in the corporate world, I'd, I'd been there for three or four years and I like had this under, under the surface feeling that it wasn't my path. And I was not, I had cognitive dissonance between like where I wanted to be and where I saw myself and what I was doing on a daily basis. And so when they actually let me go, as panicked as I was about not having an income anymore and like now having to pay 1200 bucks a month for Cobra insurance and all that crap, I was like relieved. I was like, wow, they delivered this to me. And additionally, there is, you know, unemployment that comes with that. So it was almost like they gave me this help to get to where I was going to go anyway. But now I had this like um, ongoing thing so I could continue building my business. And I was just like excited, honestly. It was, you know, you can have multiple emotions at the same time, but I was just, it felt right. It just, the energy of the going into that new environment clicked with me and I was like, nope, I'm just going to keep going. So, so, and I, I use me on this all the time, you know, two or three months or two and a half months ago, I got laid off uh, from my, from my salary job, even though I have my businesses on the side and stuff like that. And it's really weird to say this, it, but for two and a half months, I've been the happiest I've ever been. And I have like no income coming in because I have investments, but it's like, because I, for the first time in my life, I have to bet on myself. And that is yeah. such a great feeling to know that you don't have anybody to answer to. And I'm sure there was a lot of emotion in that. Like, Hey, this is my world. I'm just yeah. going to, I'm just going to go to work. Yeah. And I even came from a place where I had a, a lot of autonomy, you know, I, but I was still answering every dollar that I helped create for another company was going to benefit them. And I was, um, I had that disconnect. And when I immediately felt like I was alone in the world and like every decision that I was going to make was going to impact me directly, um, the accountability, like everything just changed my mindset, everything changed about, um, how I was going to make it. Mm -hmm. It was a very intense, like a very intense moment. And then the months after that were just out, outrageous. It's almost, it's almost not to use the word. It's almost primal to say like, you know, like, Hey, it's me, man. And yeah. every day, every day you have to wake up and you have to look at yourself in the mirror. Like, yeah, so you find my calendar now every morning it says it says chase the gazelle and so i think um i wake up every day and i'm like i'm either going to be a lion or a gazelle and that's what it feels like when you're out there on your own you're either the one that's like going after it chasing that next thing chasing that income or you're going to get eaten alive and for me that would mean going back into like a salary job where i was making money for somebody else so you get laid off the same day you go to work and then what happens next? Man, what happens next is I just start, start hustling. So our, the, the company that I was a part of while I was kind of doing more traditional sales and I was doing a lot of just traditional real estate transactions, um, the company was moving towards a very strong investment platform. We had had a partnership with um, somebody who had a pretty good amount of money and they just were we were working with them pretty closely to help them grow their investment business. So none of the investments that we were doing were particularly for ourselves, but I was learning the ropes using somebody else's money, working with wholesalers, um, working. We were very focused on auction. Um, we would buy 
we would do due diligence on three to 400 properties a month for auction. And if those were my clients, I would mean I was running through hundreds of numbers of auction properties a month, just like evaluating deal after deal. I got really comfortable with that. Um, and that's what kind of led me into the investment world. But at the same time, just started hustling, just started calling people, going to meeting, going networking, getting out every um, two to three times a week to go to mixers with Rotary Club or with uh, Chamber of Commerce or like investment mi mixers, whatever I could find to go meet people. Um, and the first year, like I said, is rough because I mean, it, most people in real estate don't make it six months because they didn't do that six months of work before they started so that they could be making money. I was fortunate enough that I had already been doing it for about nine months to a year on the side so that I at least had people knew who I was and people had my name. And I also learned at that time, Zillow was really easy to get leads off of and close those leads. It's gotten a lot harder now. It's gotten a lot more competitive. It's not the route that I use. But at that time, I could pay 200 bucks a month and I would get 10 or 15 leads. And, you know, we, I was doing at least a deal a month that way. So. And do, and do you think that because your brokerage was investor uh, kind of leaning and you had to do the auctions and stuff, don't you think it was kind of a crash course into your investing world when a lot of agents might not get that because they're doing just traditional deals? Absolutely, man. I meet a lot of agents today that don't know how to evaluate a property for a flip, rental, wholesale. Like our model taught us how to do numbers on all of those simultaneously so that if we wound up buying a property at auction and the deal was good enough, we, we knew based on our system whether we could wholesale it, whether we could wholetail it, whether we could rent it out, um, how much rehab it needed. Like the number of properties I evaluated in that year was probably like two or 3,000 you know, just like constantly doing numbers. Um, and so now when I walk through a house, I know exactly what to buy it for. It's, it's, um, and then I go to a listing appointment, I know exactly what it would take to get that to market value. So it's a skill set that not a lot of agents have. Um, and we were learning it from the inside out almost like just from evaluating the deals, how to do it. And, um, and that's amazing. So you're getting all that knowledge, you're learning, as you're going on and the years are coming up year two, like, are you starting to get in a flow? Like, is the stress, like there's n the stress is never not there, but like, yeah. I would imagine you start picking up some steam, which I think the, the unsung hero in real estate and investing in life general is momentum. And I think, you know, once yeah. you start hitting them, I think you can kind of get in a flow. Um, yes. So there was quite a bit of momentum. Um, what I, when I look back on it, it grew really quickly just from the networking side of things. I started getting a lot of deals from friends that were builders, um, from people that were referring me business and first, first year, um, first year to second year doubled the year after that doubled again. And so, but even at that time, and this is, this is five years ago now, or four years ago now, at that time, I didn't really understand how it was, how I was progressing and what I was doing to win that business. I didn't understand it. I didn't have somebody there to look at it with me. And, and because I was from the corporate world, I didn't know how to do the accounting side of it. I didn't know how to do like the management of the, the sales pipeline the way that I do now. And so I was confused after three years, I was like, Oh wow, making a couple hundred thousand a year and like not really understanding exactly how I got there. Um, and then it all kind of, there was like some very serious interpersonal problems within that brokerage. And so I had to sever ties with that company and move over to where I am now at Keller Williams. And the reason I chose this company was because I looked around everybody in the company or like the top 20 in our market are all at Keller Williams. Like these guys have to be doing something right. These people are pulling 20, 30 million a year in, um, in volume pretty easily how, you know, they, they're using a system of some kind. And so that's, once I moved over is when I learned the system, that's when I learned, um, 
how we get to where we are. And that's when the real momentum I feel like built in my career because I had to go backwards. I had to, I went from doing, like I said, a couple hundred thousand to do back to doing like 50,000. And I was like, damn, what happened? It was because I was rebuilding the system. I was re retooling the wheel and I hired a coach. So okay. that was like a turning point for me. And that was a real estate coach? Yeah. So within our, within the company, we have uh, mastery coaches. Um, and everybody that I was seeing, like there's groups out of Houston that are doing billions, like half a million to a billion in sales. And mm -hmm. they're all the guys that lead those companies are all saying, yeah, the thing that changed for me was I got a real estate coach. Mm -hmm. um, when you're not making a ton of money, you know, a thousand bucks a month for a coach is a lot. It's a lot of expense mm -hmm. and it's kind of scary. Um, but within the first six months of using a coach, I started seeing started to double my business again. And I started to see that progress towards goals and learning how to, how to do it right. Well, it's interesting because as I'm hearing your story, nine times out of 10, an agent would start with Keller Williams and then they would learn the investor side. You went the other way around. So actually like I'm seeing your years kind of like stack on each other. And then there's an ego pride thing. Cause you go back to making not a lot of money. And then yeah. boom, and then it all comes together. But I agree with you. I, you know, when I hired a coach, like it changed my entire life because yeah. it allows somebody, first of all, who's not going to put up with your BS. They're, they're not your friends. They don't, yeah. they don't, they don't do the drama thing. There's like, this is what's happening. Deal with it. And, and, it, and I will forever have a coach. It's, it's an amazing thing. Um, and so you get the coach, you're making, you go back to like making 50,000, your pride's hurt a little bit, you know, you're because you want to do good. Who doesn't want to do good? Yeah. And then what happened next? So that was that was like two and a half years ago now, or two years ago now. And then so every year since then we doubled, doubled, and then the first quarter of this year double like did everything that I did last year again. Um and I see that path, like I'm hiring more people right now, I'm I'm adding people to the team. Um I've been doing my own investment deals, flips. Um, I've got rentals. I'm, I'm like expanding that portfolio and we're seeing a lot. I'm, I'm just seeing a lot of progress. And so, and I'm in the middle of it right now. I just saw a great quote before I got on here from actually from my quote or from my coach that said, um, you, you're allowed to be on your journey and still help other people on the way. So you don't have to be done with this thing to be able to like give insight and help bring people along. And I think that's where I'm at right now is like, I want to, I know that I'm not there yet. I know that I'm not, you know, a millionaire producer at this point. Um, but for me, the most exciting part is seeing the, the people that I bring onto the team and seeing the people that come with me on the journey um, of helping them become like financially free, helping them make more, more money than they ever thought they could. Um, and so that's kind of become the new, the next stage of where I'm at. So the, one of the greatest quote, one of the just business guy, highly wrecked. He's my mint. One of my guys I listen to so much. OG in Keller Williams, OG back in the day. Uh, he said at every point in a person's life, they need to have a mentor and then be mentoring somebody. And it's yeah. like, it's like a waterfall of knowledge. And, and it's, and the only reason people don't or don't want to is because, you know, pride or, or ego or whatever, because I actually find so much fulfillment after teaching people uh, these little things. And you're like, Hey man, you don't need to be working that damn job. Like you could do this. Right. And then five years you could be retired, you know, with rentals. And right. it's like these, these arbitrary numbers that people need to get to is really simpler than they think, you know, if you do the right investments. So, yeah, definitely. Well, and I think, I think that's also why one reason I gravitated towards you right away when we first sat down and met and like, I got your energy. I got like all of the knowledge that you had acquired over the last year, like all boiled down into like our 30 minute coffee talk. And I was like, man, this, this is, um, this is the kind of like an energy that I want to be around. And that's the kind of mindset that I like to see in other people is they're willing to give and give and give and not get anything back. Mm -hmm. until you know six months a year later you never know when it's going to happen but if you're just out there like, giving it away you yeah. never know when you're going to get back but it always comes back to you and that's like 
that's like the new, in my opinion, that's the new currency of our, of our economy. That's the new currency of our um, generation is it's not always about the immediate gratification. It's so much about that growth and that journey that we're on. And the more that we, we give that content, the more that we give what we've learned away, we just know that eventually that investment comes back to us. Thousand percent. I couldn't agree more. So we'll kind of veer off to the right. Cause we, you know, uh, I know we think on the same thing. There's some things that we're going to cover on mindset and, and something we had talked about uh, on the phone, uh, the other day. Um, you know, we were talking about how we agree that like an abundant mentality when you wake up in the morning is probably just in life in general, meaning opportunities, meaning, um, real estate deals, meaning just life in general, if you live a life of abundance, no matter how much money you have in your bank account, instead of scarcity, um, you'd be amazed how the universe um, will, will pay it for. Yeah, I think, I think that was one of the biggest things I learned. And there's a great book out there um, called The Miracle Morning. And it's about a guy, it's, it's just five things to do as soon as you wake up before you start your day. Um, and one of those is all around gratitude. And I think for me, gratitude creates an abundant mentality. Um, when I sit there and I think about all the things I'm grateful that I have, um, I'm thinking about how great it is to be alive, to breathe, to have food, to have a roof, like just start with the basic things. Then I realize I have everything I need. I have everything that I want right now. That's abundance is like, you don't have to you don't have to take the shitty offer that comes in on the property or you don't have to take the, the, the shitty conversation from somebody that you don't want to hear because you don't need it. You already have everything you need. Um, everything else is just numbers. Like when you talk about the money and talk about all that, it's just a number on a scoreboard. But when you're just grateful to be alive and breathe, like for me, that is what changed the way that I approach my business, my conversations, um, just like the daily day to day living all changed when that abundant mentality came about. Yeah. Because, you know, I heard a great quote and it's like every deal, every deal, every week is the best deal of your life. And, and the thing is, is like the universe gives you what you need when you're ready. Right. And for me, because I was playing the victim, because I was in scarcity, I didn't get what I needed. And, right. and even though I've had abundance for like a year or two, I still am not getting what I, but, but life is so, I'm so blessed, you know? And if yeah. this, if this virus or whatever the F you want to call it has taught me anything, it's that literally what you need is so simple. Like right. I need my running shoes, my bike and a laptop and I'm good. Yeah. Like, that's it. Like I'm filming this right now from Charleston. I just drove up from Florida. I'm going to Virginia tomorrow to meet my business partner. Awesome. Like, I'm going to go get in a canoe in, in 30 minutes and, and hang out with myself and listen to music. Like, yeah. I don't need all the BS. Like this, this, this place costs like 70 bucks last to rent tonight. Like, I don't need to go stay in the Taj Mahal. Like, and, and when yeah. you, but that's abundance. Like that's abundance. Like I'm happy. I'm blessed right. to have this conversation with you. And, and that's what we're talking about, guys. It's, it's a mindset. It's an overall life um, life feeling. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you're getting so much joy out of, of course, you want to do real estate deals. Of course, you want to make more money. But you're getting so much pleasure out of just the day-to-day -day interactions yeah. um, with your team and, and with your clients that, that I would imagine that, that really does it all for you. Well, and, and I think the abundance goes even further to help you – uh, understand and enjoy those op those moments even more like every because you already have what you need you can be very present um, in the conversations that you have with people you're not worried about you're not necessarily worried about your finances you're not worried about all of this stuff that's out there that you already know you have the skills to take care of I think that's also part of abundance I know that I am capable of dealing with this problem when it comes up um, now I know that we're like, we're sitting here and um, I'm also very, so fortunate and so blessed to be sitting here where I am. 
um, and not be in a situation like a lot of people are in the country. People, people are suffering. And it's not to say that we don't recognize that suffering in other people and like the turmoil that's going on in the world um, and, and that we're not going to do something about it. But it does mean that at this moment, I feel at ease and at peace with the things that I do have in my life. Um, there was another, there was another um, thought that I've, I've been having over the last couple of weeks as well, which goes into um, mindset. And that's for so long, I thought that grinding it out and like the word grind was like everything was like, I'm, I'm here grinding, I'm making these calls, I'm doing all this stuff. But grinding is like suffering to me now. I'm like, grinding doesn't feel fun. Grinding for a lot of people isn't fun. Like that's what it, in, that's what it means. Um, so I've started thinking more about play, like about curiosity, about being waking up and just being like, what, what's going to happen today? Like, what can I do to make myself move forward and then treat every day as if I'm playing a game almost, um, playing a game in, in the conversation, playing a game in like in real estate, in the investment world, all these things that we learn, these skills that we acquire. It's almost like we can treat the business as if it's just another scoreboard or another game. It's a lot more fun that way for me. That's amazing. I'm totally going to steal that. And, and, the, and the reason I love that is like, for me, the coaching to see the skills get latched onto me and your gain every day and you're, you're learning stuff about yourself and, and all these things like, and you're having these conversations and you're hitting these points with these people and they're like, holy shit, like you're really good at this. And that for me is like so exciting. Like that's a never ending thing. And you're hundred percent right. Like I was the guy, I'm the official wearer of the sign that says I'm going to outgrind everybody. And I was fucking, yeah. I was fucking miserable. <laughs> because yeah. I wasn't because I wasn't getting anywhere. And what people need to understand, you have to create the space for thought, for creativity, for your family, for all these things. And that the hustle's great. Like I, there's nobody that hustles yeah. more than me. But there's a time for the hustle and there's a time not for the hustle. Like and because yeah. I've surrounded myself with great business partners and people that work for me, my hustle is different because I'm only hustling on the things that I truly love to do. So I'm happy to do those all the time and, and, yeah. they're, do, and they're doing what they're happy doing. And so we're not hustling with an anchor around our legs, is what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause if um, you're doing things yeah. that you don't want to do, you know, it's just not going to get anywhere. Um, I, I think that's absolutely true. And I think also like when I think of grind, I think of grinding to a halt and like coming to a stop at some point. I used to be super goal oriented um, and I still am to a certain respect. There's always like goals are great to have. It's great to try to achieve and set like expectations for yourself. But I think what's even more important is becoming super passionate about the process. Um, and what's actually taught me about becoming more comfortable with that like in interim between where you are and where you want to be is um, doing physical activity, like doing uh, working out and doing endurance training. So I, I'm really into lifting weights and it's literally for no other reason than to put myself through that suffering of that moment and feel that, that pain, like nobody likes doing squats. Like it's, it doesn't feel good. But as you grow in that and you get better at it and you see those numbers go up, you feel better. Um, and so like talking about like callousing your mind to the pain means that you're not grinding anymore because all of that stuff feels like fun. It feels like play because nothing can hurt you if you're putting yourself through that stuff every morning. And I know you're a, you're a training for an Ironman. You have to know what that's like sitting in a saddle for two or three hours or eight hours. Like... That's a it's lot a, of work. It fucking sucks. I'll tell you the story. Yeah. I'll tell you the story just happened to me on Monday, yesterday. Yeah. I, I told the story to my friend last night. I get in the – dude, you just know. You ride as much as I do. There's certain feelings. Like, you can just feel certain things. Some days you feel like you got it. Some days you don't. I get in the first 15 miles, and I'm like, your boy is hot today. I'm like, the legs feel good. I'm like, damn. I'm like – 
damn, this fucking time is kill. I the weather's good. I'm like, it's beautiful. I'm cruising down the, you know, I can see the beach. I'm like, this shit's great. I get to like mile twelve, and I'm like, I feel like I'm about to pay for some shit. I feel like something's up. Like I felt like I felt too good, dude. I flipped around. And it was like a 15 mile an hour win in my face oh for, like, my God. for like 15 fucking miles. Yeah. And mile two in on the 15, I just start cussing. Like, I'm like, this is fucking so stupid. I am feel yeah. like I'm not even going anywhere. I feel like the wind is blowing so fast. Like I'm moving backwards and I just had to grow yeah. it out. I just had to get in there and do the work. And my buddy sent me a text and he says, remember, your legs will never give up. It's your mind that's telling you to stop. And yeah. like, don't get me wrong. I was unhappy the whole time. But when I got done, I was like, dude, you did it. You did it. You got done. Yep. And like, everybody is so comfortable in the comfort zone. That's like, oh, well, I'm here and that's safe. And, and like, it's so much safer out of that. Like it's right. so much, there's so much glory on the other side of those things in your mind and you're basically teaching yourself. And that's why I love the Ironman because you can't win. You can't win. You could always go faster. It's the same way it was lifting weights. You could always go, you know, stronger. You, like you just can't win. It's perfect for type A personalities to, yeah. and I find that physical goals working out is such an easy goal to obtain. Like if you right. ever want to turn your life around, start there. I think it's the number one pillar. If you start yep. there, these are small goals you can hit and you feel confident. And then guess what? You start looking better. When you start looking better, you start feeling yeah. better. And it's that gradual, like it's the uptick for sure. Oh yeah. No, I definitely think that that's why that's probably my favorite part of any day is like that first part of the morning is working out and then you know, while you're in it, doesn't feel good. But the rest of the day, you're like, well, at least I did that. Like, even the rest of the day could go to shit, but at least that was good. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Um, and then, yeah, no. so I've been training on, training for a couple of years in, in weightlifting. And I have no, there's no end goal to it. Like you said, it's the same way with investing. It's the same way with running a business there's not really it never ends you just you just keep going you keep learning you keep producing and when i was younger when i was much younger i always thought that like making a hundred thousand dollars would be like ideal that'd be great if you do that in a year awesome and when i coach young people when i, I bring people on the team I'm like what do you want to make nine times out of ten people are like i want to make a hundred thousand dollars as if there's like a psychological <laughs> Yeah. mindset there. and I'm, and and now that the first time I did that the first time I made a hundred thousand dollars I was like man where'd all that money go <laughs> like, what, what, that, that was supposed to feel a lot better um, and then when I made like two hundred thousand dollars it was the same thing it was like well man it just keeps going like you just keep growing and growing that that aspect of it and it's, it's good to have those interim goals, but just know that it's never going to feel that great. It's never going to feel as good as you thought it was going to feel. Um, and that the real joy of, of anything in business and in life is just in embracing that like everyday suck, you know, that everyday part of it that, that becomes fun over time. Mm -hmm. so, and when I grew up, my dad was a doctor, he's a dentist, and he told me, he's like, listen, when you get above like 230 and you're in the 500K a year, there ain't no difference. <laughs> he said, it doesn't yeah. matter. It really yeah. doesn't matter. He said, you already have enough money. Right. And, and, and what I try to impart on people is if you made $80,000 a year and you had five investments and you didn't have to work and you got to play golf every day. Yeah. Would you tell me that you like I would say, okay, I'll give you the extra 30 grand, right? Then you can make 110, but you gotta work four days a week. Yeah. You know, I mean, like that's a real conversation because you can't tell people that you make a hundred grand, but yet you don't have to work. And that's when you put that's what people don't understand. I'll put that 30 grand in front of you, how bad you want it. Like, cause I don't think right. I want it that bad. I'd rather play golf every day. <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? Well, and it, and and that was so when I started thinking about lessons in time in, in self management that I've learned over the years. The best one is time value of money is just what what I can exchange for that time that I get to do what I actually want to do. Mm. Um, and it's definitely not that I don't love what I do. Um, cause I do, and I have fun doing real estate, but who wouldn't rather like be sipping mojitos on the beach? Like that's, that's fun. That it, whatever's fun for you, you get to do that. And, um, I, I love that about it, real estate investment because that's what it is. It just leads you to, down the path towards that freedom, um, to either spend more time on a business, on a hobby, on a vacation, whatever you want to do. Um, trading that time that you would have spent, you know, making money for a company and paying taxes and, and doing all this like mundane stuff versus letting your money work for you. Yeah. And didn't your, you told me a little story about your son who blew your mind uh, about time. I oh, thought yeah. that was the best thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Just yesterday, man, we were, how old is we he? We were going to, he's four and four I started. Guys. Four. Four. And we were, so I started him on, during quarantine. I was like, well, what are we going to do? We're spending all this time inside. Um, we can't, we can't go to these parks. We can't go to these places. I was like, I'm going to build, I'm going to build a badass skate ramp. Like I used to skate here and there. I've, I've got a skateboard. I was like, I'm going to build a ramp and just see what happens. Got wood delivered to my house. They're still doing that. Put a little ramp and a kicker together, and he's been he's been playing on that and having a blast up until now when we're allowed to go back to parks. So yesterday I'm taking him to a park, and it's we had just eaten, so there wasn't a whole lot of time left in the day. I was like, yeah, we really only have about 30 minutes before the sun sets, and he's like, well, can we just make more time? And I was like, make more make more time for what? Like, what do you mean? He's like, like is there a machine that will make us more time? so that we could skate longer. And I was like, I, I so wish there was dude. Like that would be so, so wonderful to have. And the only machine I can really think of to do that would be like our focus and energy on that time that we get to spend together. So as long as we are like intentional, that's like the machine that gets, that drives that, um, that value of time. Dude, we just got, I just got schooled by a four-year-old, man. He just changed my entire view on everything. I love it. Yeah. That's wonderful. He, he schools me on a daily basis, but, but there's, that's there's some, the, I mean, that, that, yeah, there's something to be said when your mind's not, there's no context on your mind. It's just like, this is what yeah. I want. <laughs> I want more time to skate, you know? Yeah. And, Something I tell people, yeah, and something I tell people, especially the young ones that I coach and help in real estate investing, you know, that want to have families, right, and, and want to have that. I said, listen, in your 20s, you have all the time in the world. So if you waste your 20s when you don't have responsibilities of kids, soccer practice, and stuff like that, this right now, meaning these years, are how you buy your time in your 30s. To, to, to spend the time with your kids that you want. Now, you don't, you don't wait till you get to 30 with the kids and then try to spend time. You put in the work yeah. now with investments and, and strategic ways of using your money so you can afford yourself the time. Because if you talk to people that have made it, made it, the only thing they care about is time. That's it. Yeah. It's the only, it's the only thing we won't get back. It's the only thing you literally can't make more of. Um, it's, it's very very valuable. Um, and then you were saying, I, I think that's really in, incredible what I've seen in the next generation. Um, and I think what our generation has done really well is take away that we, we have such limited time on earth. We want to spend it the best way possible. We don't all want to make a ton of money. We just want to do it our way. We just want to do it in a way that makes us happy. And I think a I think in 2020 and forward, happiness will become currency in one way or another. Happiness itself and a person's um, happiness with their life has become more important with the th than the things that they have, the money that they make, the jobs that they do. And I think that's an awesome thing. I think that 
our generation is becoming less materialistic. I think like that seems to be the way that our society is going. Is let there's a huge you know tiny house movement. There's there's these huge like minimalism movements, um, and I totally support that. And I also support most people don't care if you do make a million bucks a year and you spend it however you want. It's like it's whatever is important to you and valuable to you. That's what will become whatever makes you happy will become currency. Listen, listen. If you're a friend of mine. And since you were two years old, the number one thing you care about is Corvettes and you have seven of them. I don't give a shit if that makes you, if you smile and you do cartwheels every day when you walk out of the house then do it. The only yeah. thing that I care about for me is travel and doing things with friends and experiences. So that's where I spend my money on. So you might spend your money on Corvettes. I might go, you know, for my 40th next year, I'm going to go to Europe for, you know, seven weeks. That's what I care about. Like, that's what I want to do. And so that's cool for me. And like, if you want to go buy Bentleys, go buy Bentleys. I don't care if you love Bentleys, but don't do them for somebody else. I'm not going to Europe for somebody else. I'm going to Europe for myself. And that's what we're saying, guys, is that you have to make sure that the goals that you're setting, the intentions that you're setting as you wake up every day are for you and for you alone. And it doesn't effing matter what that looks like to anybody else. It doesn't matter. And yeah. if you want to go make 60 grand and you want to coach your kid's soccer team and that's like the greatest throw in your life, then go do that. I don't, it doesn't matter. Like stop living for other people. Seriously. Yeah. I, I used to think like, cause I grew up um, with a, with parents who were products of the baby boomer generation. And I think my dad still believes that like, the number one way to show people that you love them is by making self-sacrifices for another person. But I think what we've realized over, which is, is noble, it's commendable, what I think that we've realized in the last like couple decades is that the most important thing you can do is make yourself happy first so that you can spread that to other people. Because if you give so much of yourself that you're miserable, you're only going to make other people other people around you miserable as well. But if you focus on the things that make you happy and share that, then that's the energy that you put out and that's what you get back. So I, I think that that was a really critical thing to learn as well in the last couple of years. Tim, I told this story last night. It's the weirdest thing in the world. I can't describe it, the feeling that it gives me. And it's not even my intention, but this is how crazy it is. So everybody knows I've been sober for about a year and five months. It was a personal decision. Alcohol did not serve me. That was just how, for me. In the last four months, three people that I truly care about, I'm talking close friends, people that work for me, people that I work with, investors, um, they're now sober too. And I did not say anything to them. I did not suggest anything to them. They didn't even tell me they were getting sober, but they just came to me and they said, if your dumb ass can do it, if your crazy ass can do it, I'm sure as hell I can do it. <laughs> and so what you're not understanding is by me living my life, just me living my life for me, it has shine a light for them. And you know, they said you're, you know, you're part of the yeah. reason. And that's me not doing anything externally. It's just me living my best life. Right. And that's what we're talking about. That's the true power of just being happy in your choices. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that that is, I think that if you put that first, like we were saying, happiness is a currency. I think if you continue to make that your priority and that's awesome, Austin, like seriously, congrats, because that's the kind of stuff you probably didn't expect to hear from people. No. You didn't do it. You didn't do it for them. You did it because you needed that and other people saw the change that it made, had for you and in your life. Um, and that's incredible. So congratulations. I, I, I think that that is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. And that right there is a, is a byproduct of, look, this world's super simple. It's like, yes, it's complicated, but simple. You go out every day, you choose abundance and happiness and you choose that you're going to be the best version of yourself. And that's all that's required because I no longer have expectations on anybody anymore. 
and you know, people have, I get triggered. I get triggered all the time with, with, you know, family members or, you know, um, you know, just people that are close to me that know me real well, like the old versions of me that can trigger, set me off. Like, of course I get triggered. I'm not walking around happy as shit. Like I'm, you know, like stuff happens. I sit in it, but, but I, but I choose that. I think something you mentioned earlier, that's something I'm really getting on lately is that let's say you have a bad moment or a bad deal. Let's just say shit goes south. We did a deal together when I was financing it. Shit went fucking way south. But that was an hour of the day. That's it. The rest of the day was pretty great. But people want to label it as, oh, it was a shitty day. Yeah. Like, no, that moment in time was pretty shitty, but the rest of the day was kind of great. You know? Yeah. In the and, and I'll be honest, like yesterday I had a pretty I had a pretty bad day too. Like I just felt off all day. I felt down. Like obviously stuff, things that are going on in the world are painful, like we were saying, and that like there's a lot of that weighing on us, even underneath the surface. And so I just felt off. And then like I was saying, telling that story about taking my son skateboarding, we went and skateboarded for an hour. And by the time I was done, I was exhausted. I was sweaty. And I had forgotten about the entire day. I had forgotten about everything bad that had happened. I forgot about how I felt and I just felt good. And I felt good about spending that time with him. And I think that if people know what's going to make them happy as well, if you invest the time in figuring out like the thing, the activities that make you feel the best, which is usually doing something physical, it takes your mind off of like all the other crap. But um, that's super important. And then people don't do enough of it to like, self-care it's kind of like a hot thing but um yeah it's just taking care of yourself and then you can be the best version of yourself the next day and the next moment that you're needed there's no chance that if you're sad or uh feeling off if you do physical activities you can't do both it doesn't exist you 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 know your body just starts moving so guys what you don't know about this lovely human sitting next to me is he's a he's a youtube parody song star uh if you, you if you get a chance his videos are next level it's so funny when he sells houses he does some uh some riffs on some songs you check him out on youtube you can't you can't go wrong it's so funny it's the it's amazing uh we try oh, yeah. to compete, compete with each other but how do they get a hold of you how do they track you down if they want to um uh talk to you or what's the best way to get a hold of you? yeah so so Almost all of my stuff, you know, for, for the past several years is on my Facebook page. Um, Facebook, Timothy Warlow, KW Bernie. And then I've been starting to add content to YouTube, I'm starting to make more relevant stuff specifically for the YouTube channel. So more than welcome to reach out to me there. Um, I'll give you my email and stuff if you want to chat. But yeah, that that's been a super fun. I actually just had somebody recognize me today at the post office. He he was on the phone and he said something about Medtronic and I looked at him, never met him before, but I, but he left there and sent me a message on Facebook. He's like, was that you at, at the post office? He's like, I think you're internet famous. So like, people <laughs> were like, oh, and the, the music video I put out, the Noel Camper one, which was like an old town road parody. Yeah. Yeah. Very next day, this old man and I live in you know rural Bernie. So it's so funny when these people do this, but he comes up, he's like, Hey, is this is this you on the Facebook? He's like, this is the video I saw of you rapping. I can't believe how funny that is, boy. I, I thought it was hilarious. He's like, that was my neighbor's house. He's like, I gotta call you when I want to sell. So, Boom! Like, there you yeah, go, baby. That it, it helps. It, it helps uh, make people feel like they know me when I walk into a meeting. So. I love it. That's why I do it. But I also do that because I love music. I, I'm a musician as well. I love it. Well, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with a friend. Send it out to everybody. Thank you all so much for listening. Uh, I truly appreciate all you listening, all the feedback I'm getting. It's really making it worthwhile. So thank you so much. Thank you, Tim, for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Keep doing what you're doing. I love it. You got it, man. Will do. Thanks.
Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoy this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.